Fresh new AMC FTD numbers have just been released and we have the latest for you here in this video. On top of that, we're going to talk about what's happened today with AMC, go over the Ortex data, take a deep look at the technicals and get into some of these earnings that will be coming here in after hours as well as in pre-market tomorrow. If you guys are unaware, well, let me get you caught up to speed. There's not a lot of economic data this week, so the markets are waiting for earnings. That is the big focus on what could move the broad market. So we have a lot to talk about in a very short amount of time. Hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Source your comments, questions, or concerns down below in the comment section if you have not already. Let's get into it. So First things first, let's start with what is happening with AMC right here and right now. The stock is up 1.66%, getting very volatile, finding some support around that $5 level. You can see we briefly went under that on April 14th. Now you're back above that, and you were above that for basically the whole entire day today. You did hit a low of $5. It looks like $0.12 cents per share. Uh, was the low so it's a good thing that we're holding support at five dollars per share and this technical pattern right here hitting higher lows now if you actually look at these higher lows you can see we had lows right here went higher came down hit a low went higher came down hit a lower low right here but now you have hit a higher low than where you were at in the beginning of April. So it looks like you're back on this bullish trajectory and very soon could you break above that 50 and 100 day moving average yet again. And if this pattern holds true, then you should well break above those this time around. Uh, typically, you could uh, expect to see a break of the previous higher high once you start to set higher lows. And that's kind of what I expect uh, towards the end of this week. Now, as you guys probably know there's a lot of option activity for this week expiring on april 21st with amc stock that could help give you a gamma squeeze now it's not in the way that most people uh think about it but it's the best way to think about it so if we take a look at the uh stock go tracker data go ahead and refresh this so you guys have the most up-to-date numbers if you look at the call side it's not that impressive relative to the put side you have in the money calls at about 59,000 out the money calls at 395,000 in the money puts at 199,000 out of the money puts at 654,000 so a lot more puts that are on this expiration now that's going to hold true for a couple of weeks right you just expect to see more puts than calls especially since everyone is so bearish about april 27th i've talked about it many times i'm bullish about april 27th i think any possible outcome that we get is going to be bullish now topic for another video we talked about that in the video earlier earlier today if you guys want to watch that go ahead and watch it now how you can get a gamma squeeze this week is one, you do have a decent amount of calls out the money, but you do have 59,000 calls in the money. That's not as important as the amount of puts that are currently in the money. 199,000. If AMC stock goes higher and starts to break out above that 50 and 100 day moving average, you're going to see a lot of puts go out of the money. Now, when puts go into the money, market makers, they have to go out and short stock because if you buy a put, call it an amc three dollar put then no matter if amc goes to a dollar by your expiration you can sell your stock at three dollars so a market maker they're not just gonna sell you a bunch of puts if amc could go to theoretically a dollar they would lose a lot of money so what they have to do is they have to go out and short stock let's say your break even on your puts is three dollars 15 cents per share well market makers are gonna have to go out at three dollars 16 cents per share or 17 cents per share or up to probably 20 or 25 cents per share and hedge out those positions so they still break even or actually make a profit so when these puts go from into the money especially with these numbers 200,000 that you're looking at right here go out of the money that's actually a lot of buying pressure because when that happens market makers to stay neutral they go out and they buy back their shorted shares that they shorted 
for these puts. So it's like a reverse gamma squeeze. I don't like to use that those words because it is represented as a gamma squeeze, but it's not in the typical way of you would expect people just going out and buying calls that causes it. It can actually happen from the put side of it as well. Now, obviously an added benefit would be if people go out and buy a bunch of call options that expire this Friday. Obviously that would help give you a gamma squeeze. I cannot sit here and forecast that. I cannot pretend to forecast that that is going to happen. But we do know there's a lot of option activity uh, for this Friday. And if we look at the overall percentages here, the open interest held on the call side is about 34%. Open interest held at the put side is 65%. So almost a two to one ratio uh, between calls and puts for this Friday. If you look at it, April 28th, I think this is the one that I'm watching the most because it's the day after the 27th. And this is kind of telling you how hedge funds are feeling about this court date. You're now sitting at 22.5% of the open interest being calls, 77.5% being puts. At the lowest point here, when people were the most bearish, uh, you had about 9% of the open interest held on the call side. About 90% of all options on this expiration were puts. Now it's 22.5% are calls. Getting better as AMC has risen recently. And I do expect this to continue to happen. And another reason why I'm fairly bullish for this week, and I had set my price prediction in uh, that Sunday night video, around $6.50 per share. I think that's uh, reasonable considering what we're seeing, especially if earnings are bad. Now, if you take a look at the day today, AMC is up 1.5%. Apple is down half percent. Netflix down 2.5%. Tesla down about a half percent, almost 1%. S&P hitting fresh lows down a third of a percent. AMC's green. Yeah, it's tended to be this way as of recently. AMC has really discorrelated the markets. If the markets go higher, AMC has been going lower. If the markets go lower, AMC has been going higher. So I think bad earnings could be positive for AMC throughout the rest of this week. Now, pre-market tomorrow. Well, I, I guess I should say after hours today, you're going to get a couple banks that report, but they're very small relative to the banks that we have already heard from. Not going to be a big driver unless you get, you know, some regional bank uh, fears coming back again. We'll see. You do have uh, Service First Bank. You do have Cross First Bank Corp Inc. Uh, Pinnacle, Financial Partners, kind of hard to see, and First Bank, some small, small regional banks that will report. I don't expect a big move, but it is possible. Now, tomorrow pre-market, you're going to get Bank of America, Johnson & Johnson's, Goldman Sachs, Lockheed Martin, BNY Mellon, Prologix, uh, Ericsson's, Mercantile, Commerce Bank, and Ellie's Game. Now, obviously, Bank of America, Johnson & Johnson. Goldman Sachs are going to be the big guys. Second tier names, Lockheed Martin and BNY Mellon. These three can have big implications for one, obviously the banking sector, but Goldman Sachs more specifically with investment banking. And I think investment banking um, could do pretty poorly here. And we'll see with Goldman Sachs. Uh, just a hunch that I have made some money shorting uh, what well, we'll buying puts on uh, Goldman a couple of weeks ago. Uh, but I think they could be a weak spot. Johnson & Johnson for healthcare. Now, the biggest story tomorrow will be Netflix. Netflix earnings will be key. And the way Netflix is reacting today, the share price is down 2.62% at the time of recording this video. Really in a pretty bad downturn ever since pre-market, uh, dropping about $12 here from the highs of pre-market. Heading into earnings, Typically not a good thing, and Netflix does have a lot of meat on the bone after this latest just run we have seen since they hit the lows in uh, May of 2022. So to give some of this back here would not be a positive thing for the markets. Would kind of show technology is not as safe as people expect. People have been running into technology like a madman here, really bidding up these stocks to bubblicious kind of levels. Um under the notion that technology would be safe from an economic downturn. That's likely not the case. Now, let's switch gears a little bit.
And last thing, again, I do want to acknowledge, bad market has been good for AMC recently. Who knows how long this will last, and we've explained why this happens, mainly due to collateral requirements. It could last a while, it could end tomorrow. But from my standpoint here, it probably lasts throughout the rest of this week, at the very minimum. And then next week as well, you're going to get your big dogs, right? Your Microsofts, your Apples, your Googles, your, your uh, Amazons. Those guys will report earnings next week, and that will be the icing on top. Uh, whether you, you know, continue to rally in the markets or if markets fall and AMC can rip. Now, AMC is still on the threshold securities list. You're looking at 26.16% short interest of free float, 135 million shares that are currently sold short. Cost to borrow rates are really around that 300 to 350% range. Cost to borrow average, 334%. Cost to borrow max, 366%. If you take a look at interactive brokers, around 233% cost to borrow rates, about 350,000 shares that are currently available to be lent out. These numbers here are pretty brutal for shorts that are in their short positions. And I think that's a big reason why you rally after April 27th, because just the cost of shorting AMC relative to the amount that you will make off of any conversion between Ape and AMC minus a settlement is just flat out not worth it if this thing takes some time. Now, if it's, this were to happen April 27th, you get the green light. AMC does a reverse split next week. Granted, I think that's the lowest outcome likely, right? And I think the judge made that clear. Um, then maybe it would make sense on a you know percentage basis. You only stand to make like 100% off of this AMC Ape conversion as we sit right now, but you could lose 200 plus percent if it took a year. What if it takes six months? Then you're going to be break even on that whole trade. You're screwed. And granted, I'm sure a lot of shorts were taken out at higher cost of borrow rates than 200%. That's why it's a real problem for the shorts. They need this to happen as soon as possible. Now, last thing that I really want to cover here in this video is going to be the FTD number. So the FTD numbers did just update, as you guys likely know by now, If especially if, if you you know, didn't just skip to the end. AMC has been on the threshold securities list list now for the last couple of days. And with that, you're going to get the FTD numbers. Now, what I like to pay attention to is the failure to deliver number and the closeout date, the T plus 35 settlement date. Now, they make it very easy to understand. So today you're looking at about a million shares that need to be bought back. And that's that number right here, the failure to deliver closeout date. Uh, would be right here. Today is April 17th. You got about 1 million shares. Tomorrow, you're going to have 2.7 million shares that come due on April 18th. April 19th will be Wednesday, and you're going to have 2.6 million FTDs that come due. On Thursday, April 20th, <laughs> you're going to get 2.3 million FTDs that do come due. The day after 420, April 21st, you're going to get 6.3 million FTDs that do come due. And that's going to be on our, again, very large option expiration. And then following that, you drop back down to about a million uh, on that uh, on that following day. Uh, following, what is that? Tuesday, you drop back down to about a million. And then you ramp up from a, from a million back to about four and a half million FTDs uh, for the April 27th through the 28th period. So this will be important and we will continue to monitor this. There's a possibility these numbers do update, but if you look at this chart right here and I'm gonna scroll down so you guys can really see these white bars, this was the January rally of 2021 that you've seen. You're getting FTD numbers that you have never seen before. So if you thought FTDs were ever important, well, they're a lot more important this time around. And when FTDs spike, well, historically, AMC's share price always spikes. As you can see in yellow here, FTD spike, AMC spikes. FTD spike, AMC spikes. FTD spike, AMC squeezes. FTD spike, AMC quote unquote squeezes. 
Again, FDD spike, rally. FDD spike, rally. I think this time is no different, but hey, we'll see. Ladies and gentlemen, that is going to do it for this video. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, source your comments, questions, or concerns down below in the comment section. Thank you guys for watching. And if you guys want to come trade with me live in real time, link down below in the description of this video. Thank you guys for watching. Most importantly, enjoy the rest of your day, and I will see you in the next one.